Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. I'm Joey McWilliams. It's a privilege to be joined today on the summit by the head coach of the Northwestern Rangers, Coach Vinay Patel, in his third season with the program. And coach, what a big season this is. 20 and 8 on the year overall. You look at that and you have to say, okay, that's a good number. That's something that we could look at and say we've hit the 20 win mark already heading into postseason play, which you all know you've assured yourselves of that as well. But it's the turnaround that has made such a big difference and something that you have to look at. Three wins last year, 20 wins this year. Coach, talk about that big turnaround. You know, it was uh, an exhausting effort, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> and none of us had any clue what we had on our hands. And, um, you know, we didn't return much. You know, we went through last year and, and uh, you know, we got hit really hard with COVID last year. And I don't think – people understood uh, what our program went through a year ago. Uh, you know, there was a point where we had 10 positives at the same time or our wow. program was shut down for 21 straight days. And, and then we played on the 22nd day. Uh, so, you know, uh, I got some friends going through it this year a little bit, and I think they uh, understand a little bit more of what we went through a year ago, but it, it was just a hard year for everyone, players, coaches, uh, you know, everyone involved with that process. And, uh, you know, we didn't, we didn't have a lot back, you know, we really, we got, brought three kids back total, you know, and, and uh, two of them are still with us. One of them graduated at Christmas and, uh, you know, his dad was a little sick. So he went home uh, after Christmas, after he graduated, be home with him. So, uh, you know, right now we got two guys back from a year ago. So, uh, you know, when the season ended, we had our hands full uh, in recruiting and, um, you know, I got to give a lot of credit to our staff, uh, especially coach Jordan Franz, our associate head coach. Uh, uh, we went through the ringer in the spring and summer of, of trying to put this roster together uh, there was a lot we were trying to get done in a very short amount of time, what felt like a short amount of time with as many guys as we needed. Um, but, you know, the thing we ultimately said we wanted was uh, winners. You know, uh, first two kids we signed were Larry White and Jalen Smith, and and they were from Coffeyville Community College, and they just won the national championship in junior college. Uh, then if you start going down our roster, you know, we got a kid that's been in a junior college final four. They had one that's been in Elite Eight. Uh, had, you know, Bubba Furlong back. He was a part of three 20 win seasons at Sam Houston. And, you know, it's something we really specifically set out for in recruiting was just finding guys that already knew how to win. Um, and we thought maybe that would help speed up the process when they got here, because we felt like we could be a little bit harder on them and they were going to understand what we were trying to do quicker. Um, and again, we didn't know how that was going to work out. Uh, I still remember the first day that everyone got here, everyone's at, kind of a side basket, just getting shots up and no one's talking to each other. And uh, it was because no one knew each other, you know, and now I had to kind of huddle them all up and say, guys, uh, it's going to be a long season if we don't start getting to know each other a little bit better than this. You can't just go and shoot and, uh, you know, kind of stand by yourself. And and uh, it was kind of a funny day uh, when I think back on that to where we're at now, because uh, if you looked at our team now, we look like a very close knit group. Now, uh, these guys are having a lot of fun playing. Uh, with one another. And, you know, I got to give the players a lot of the credit because uh, they decided they wanted to be good this year. And, and uh, I think the biggest transformation this team has made from the fall to the spring is uh, in close games in the fall, it looked like we had a group that hoped to win versus now, you know, in those close games, we look like a group that sometimes knows they're going to win. And just the confidence level has really increased. And, and uh, you know, there's a lot that went into that. I got to really thank, uh, you know, our administration, Janet Cunningham, our president, and Brad Franz, our, our AD. They really supported the the moves and uh, decisions we made from the end of last season to this season and and uh, trusted uh, that we were going to get the job done. And, and uh, you know, it's not done yet. Uh, you know, we've had a nice season. I'm proud of the job that we've done. Uh, you know, there's only three teams in the GAC that won 20 games this year, and, and we were one of them. Uh, but that wasn't the goal for us. You know, well, you know we wanted to be – a top three team. And, and, you know, we want to be the team that's uh, going into this thing in March and trying to win the conference tournament. And and I know there's eight teams right now saying the same thing. And that's what we've been echoing uh, in the locker room for the last three days is, you know, there's, there's eight teams right now all saying the same thing and, and one team's going to decide to do it. So uh, I'm anxious to get to Shawnee and see how that plays out. The Northwestern Rangers will be the number three seed in the Great American Conference Tournament, which begins on Thursday in Shawnee, a new site for the GAC Tournament, Fire Lake Arena there in Shawnee, Oklahoma. Coach, as you look at the season now, and you talk about the turnaround between fall and spring, and 
Uh, so many things that you just unwrapped right there. I really want to ask you a couple more questions about, but I, I, I want to start there though, from fall to spring, you, you're ending the season. Well, you've won four of your last five games, 11 of your last 13 games heading into postseason play. And it, it looks like they have been able to gel and, and make the turnaround you talked about. You know, really, I think the defining moment for our, our season was, uh, you know, and it's just funny how it plays out, but, you know, we, we opened the semester after Christmas and we go down to Magnolia uh, and play Southern Arc and, and they just beat the tar out of us. And uh, we didn't execute. We didn't uh, we just didn't do a lot of things right. And, um, you know, fortunately for us, just how it played out, uh, Monticello was going through some covid protocols. Uh, so our girls continued on uh, to Monticello and we had to come home. Uh, and we had a very rough practice on that Saturday that we should have been playing uh, because I wasn't happy with where we were at as a team. And, and I really thought that was kind of the day our team drew a line in the sand and they said, hey, here's who we're going to be this season. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to be a tough nosed team that's going to defend uh, and we're going to play as a team. And, and you know, about that time, we, we just started having some phenomenal games sharing the basketball. I mean, we had a 20 assist game, 16 and 18 assist games. And we started really just sharing the basketball on, on one end uh, and then really coming together on the other end defensively. You know, this has been a tough team uh, defensively to play against. Uh, you know, we're up there in a lot of the team statistics defensively, uh, collectively as a group, and then individually. You know, Bubba Furlong leads the conference in blocks. Uh, Larry White leads the conference in steals. Uh, I think we got multiple guys that are in the top 10 in blocks, multiple guys top 10 in steals. Uh, and also multiple guys that are in the top 10 in rebounds per game. And, and you know, they have really taken pride on that, that end of the floor. Um, and as you, you've talked to me several times, you know, we try to hang our hat on that end of the floor uh, and start there. And then, and then we really preach team basketball. So, you know, uh, you, you and I talked about this before we went on, just the fact that we got four guys basically averaging the same amount of points, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, <laughs> sometimes that's good. And sometimes that's bad because, uh, you know, you really don't know who's going to step up. And as a coach, sometimes that drives you crazy. But, uh, you know, Malik Parsons has, has started to really come into his own. And he had a stretch where he went, you know, five out of six games where he had 19 or more points. Uh, Bubba Furlong's been player of the week in the league uh, one time, and he had a 28-point game. Larry White's had a 34-point game already this season. Uh, Brian Free, uh, he led the league and made three-pointers this year. And, you know, and, and he's become uh, one of the best perimeter threats in the conference as well. So, uh, you know, it's it, – and then we've had some other unsung heroes. You know, Ravel Moody, Anthony Jones, and Eric Hansick have come off the bench and come in and produced, uh, you know, at, at times that we've needed it as well. So that's been really unique about our team as, uh, you know, even going down the stretch of these games – uh, we're in tight games, and when we need a basket, you know, we're not going to the same guy every time. We're, we have different options that we're looking for and different guys that we're going to uh, in crucial moments of the game. And, and so, uh, you know, it's been fun because you see how excited our guys get about the success each one of them is having. You know, they're not just excited about their own success, uh, but you see it on our bench. You see it on our floor. I've had so many people compliment us. I've had opposing coaches in our league even – you know, after they've scouted us, they've just commented on it looks like your guys are having a lot of fun out there. And, yeah. and you know, it, it, you can say that when you're winning. I mean, uh, you know, you do have a lot <laughs> more fun uh, when you're winning. But I will say these these guys truly enjoy uh, playing together and being around each other. You know, it's it's fun. Uh, you know, we don't have clicks or anything like that on this team. It, it's when you see them, you see a good chunk of them, uh, you know, just walking through the gym or whatever it might be, uh, you know, in between classes. So. Uh, it's been great how it's all come together and, and how these guys have really enjoyed each other's company. And I, I think that's helped uh, with the progress that we've made on the floor. Uh, you know, but like I said, we, we've got a long ways to go. I'm excited about where we're at right now. But, uh, you know, this is not the goal for us right now. You know, I, we set the bar uh, high as a coaching staff. And, and you know, I'm just I'm never going to celebrate mediocrity, uh, you know, and, and I've just. I've said that from when I was a pup and I was growing up in the business, you know, our, our coach uh, that I worked for, he's on Texas tech staff now, right now, Rick Cooper. And, you know, he just always set the bar so high for the programs that he coached. And, and I've just continued to do that, uh, you know, as I've went on as my own uh, into this coaching profession. So, uh, you know, the, 
the goal has never just been to make the conference tournament for us. You know, the goal has been uh, to get in there and try to win it. Uh, but like I said, you know, there's eight teams in there trying to do the exact same this year. So it's going to be a lot of fun uh, this weekend, and I'm anxious to get down there and see how our team performs. We're speaking now with Coach Vinay Patel from Northwestern in his third season with the program here on the Summit on Midwest Sports Net, and I encourage you please consider subscribing to the channel. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond here on the channel. And coach, you know, you talk about the, those, that team, uh, the defense, which again, we've, we've talked about on more than one occasion, you all play good defense, had a chance to, to see your team in action. I think one of the things that stood out to me from that team, how well they get into the passing lane. It's uh, just amazing how quickly they find a way to get in the passing lane. And, and I think that's just a, a, a good reflection on you and that. I, talking about then this this team, you have so many players that are going to be coming back. You know, you said you had so few from the previous season, and now with this team, you have so many players that are going to be coming back. I want to talk about that number one because the future is bright, and then number two, I, I wanted to address what you talked about also. Then with your recruiting, are you going to go into re recruiting in the same manner? Then in the spring, I, I, it has to shift a little bit then coming into this spring when you come out of this year. Talk about your team and, and how it goes into the future. Well, you know, we have three seniors right now. And so uh, I think we have 13 or 14 guys uh, projected to be back next year. Uh, you know, the portal has changed so much for college sports that now, you know, right now we may say we have 13 or 14. We may have yeah. four back when it's all, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, uh, we've, we've talked about the biggest thing we want to do is uh, re-recruit all these guys uh, back. Cause I just think that's where we're at right now uh, as a profession. Uh, you know, these guys got to know that we're going to continue to be there for them and, and support them academically and athletically and, uh, and socially and, and, you know, any which way that they need. And, and uh, you know, for us, I'm excited about everything that we have back. Uh, but I don't want that to be a little bit of a fool's gold for them either, you know, because uh, I, I think sometimes when you when you have a bunch back, uh, complacency might set in, uh, you know, and, and I'm, I'm used to just having a sense of urgency all the time and everything that we do. So, uh, you know, we, we've got a lot of needs to address in recruiting still. Um, you know, like I said, uh, uh, Southeastern and Oklahoma Baptist finished one and two in the league, and, and that's where we want to be at. So, uh, you know, for, for me personally as a coach, uh, we're not there yet. So, you know, we got some needs that we have to address in recruiting. The way we did it this year, uh, you know, and it just helped. I mean, COVID obviously changed the dynamic of recruiting. And, you know, we were able to get uh, five sophomores on this roster, uh, and three of them start for us right now, you know, and so – you know, those guys are going to be with us for a while. Uh, you know, at the time, our leading scorer, uh, Jason Douglas Stanley, he blew his Achilles back in December uh, against East Central. Well, he got his year back, so he'll get a medical red shirt, and he'll still have two more years for us. So technically, you know, you can count him as a sophomore right now because he's going to have two more uh, after this season. So there is a good chunk of our roster that has experience, that has played, that's back. I'm hoping maybe that speeds up the process next year when we add some new guys because – uh, I'll tell you what, Bubba Furlong had a had a lot on his plate this year, uh, you know, trying to lead this team and uh, tell them my expectations and, and uh, you know, how to cope with me as a coach at times and, you know, what I'm thinking and what I'm saying and, and, and how to handle that at times. And, you know, he was a one man show trying to address all the guys all the time. And I'm hoping if we have a lot more voices that have gone through that and understand the experience that they've, they've been through. It's going to lead to some success faster for some of the newer guys that we bring in next year. Um, but, you know, we, we're going to attack it as best as we can. You know, we're going to get the best players we can find that are going to help us be in position to maybe win this thing next year and, and do what Southeastern just did because uh, you know, they, they had a heck of a, a team this year. Uh, Kelly Green's done a great job. Uh, Jason Aker's done a great job with his bunch. Uh, you know, and you can just go down the line. There's phenomenal coaches and programs in this league. Uh, you know, Adam Bohutch's bunch uh, got off to a rough start, and then they went on a tear, uh, and we're right there toe-to-toe -to -toe with us uh, at the very end. And, and uh, you know, we got very fortunate in that second-to-last game at our place against them. And, um, you know, in, in one of the best games I've been a part of at our place, you know, uh, I mean, it was a fun game. But, you know, you go down a lot. Jimmy Elgus has done a great job. Andy Sharp has done a great job. Terry Evans has done a great job. You know, Max has come in at East Central this year and got his team in the conference tournament uh, in his first year. So, uh, you know, there's never a night off. I think if there's one thing you learn in the conference, it's that. Um, and that's what I'm hoping these guys take away from this as far as the experience is, you know, when you get into next season, 
you know, now they're going to be more familiar with the programs. You know, this year the trick was trying to get them to understand who everyone was because they didn't even know uh, the teams, uh, their playing styles, uh, players, uh, you know, and now with that experience, they're going to understand top to bottom, uh, you know, every team in this league is good. I mean, it's just – you wish there was a, you know, a lead or a team that you could say, Hey, uh, you know, this one, this one's going to be a little bit easier, but it's just not. And, and uh, you know, I can't tell you how many games went down to the wire for us and, and, uh, and it didn't matter what place the opponent was in at that time. So, uh, you know, for us, the thing that I'm excited about with that experience more is just that is just understanding of our league and what it takes to find success in this conference. Uh, I'm hoping they understand that a little bit more and I'm hoping the process uh, is not as grueling as it was this year because we were having to teach everything. Uh, you know, there's just no way around it, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, how we warm up to, you know, how we want to walk off the floor to, uh, you know, what we're saying in timeouts, what we're saying to each other, uh, you know, how we need to handle adversity, uh, you know, how we need to uh, respond after turning the basketball over. You know, uh, there's teams that point, and fi- uh, point fingers and blame, and then there's teams that run over and pat each other on the back and say, hey, let's get it back on the other end. And, you know, trying to learn all that stuff as quick as you can is, is it's just challenging sometimes. And I'm, I'm hoping this experience uh, really ca- catapults us uh, into finding consistency. You know, uh, you know, when I interviewed for this job, one of the things I told Brad Franz was, you know, I didn't want to be a one hit wonder. I didn't want to just have one good season. Uh, we wanted to find some consistency, uh, you know, and find some success consistently. And I'm hoping the fact that we got so much back now uh, will establish us a little bit more and, and uh, you know, teams will uh, see that maybe we're finding a little bit more success more years in a row than just one. So, uh, you know, that's my hope in this thing. But again, a lot, a lot is to be determined with that. You know, recruiting will have a lot to do with that as well. And how these guys uh, do their off season, summer and preseason will have a lot to do with that. Well, coach, this season is not yet done and, and you've accomplished what you said. You want to be in the top three. We are in the top three, the number three seed, in the Great American Conference postseason tournament, which is coming up this week. And I find it interesting that you said that Southern Arkansas, that game and that weekend was a time for a turnaround because, hey, that's who you have. You get the number six seed in the Mule Riders, and you all split during the regular season after that loss that you talked about early on. You defeated the Mule Riders in Alva. And so home and home, you're playing in a neutral site then, that game this weekend. Talk about your matchup and and what the GAC tournament looks like for you. I think at this time you just throw seeding out the window. Uh, (laughs) Everyone in this league seems the same top to bottom uh, to us. Uh, uh, Southern Arc is a tremendous team. Coach Sharp's team, uh, they have the experience in this tournament. They played for the championship a year ago. Uh, They're NCAA tournament team, and and they got uh, a lot of experience back and. you know, they got one of the best guards in the league and, and a really good perimeter play. And then just a tenacious front line uh, with the Brooks brothers. And, and uh, you know, they kicked our tail uh, not only there, but at our place, too. You know, we were fortunate enough to get that win. But, um, you know, they do such a great job on the glass. Uh, they lead the league in offensive rebounding. Uh, and his teams are always the best defensive teams in the league, you know, up there uh, statistically. Uh, and they compete really hard. You know, I, I give Coach Sharp a lot of credit. He's been in the league for a long time. He's found his niche. And and uh, you know what his team's going to do and the tricks. Can you do anything about it? You know, and that's what I like. <laughs> I, I told him and, and uh, you know, and I meant it when I, I said, hey, I uh, shook his hand at our place before we played. And I said, you know, you're one of the teams we really want to emulate here is just how tough they are, because uh, I do think they're very physical uh, and they, they they really can compete at a high level against any style of play. Uh, and really, they dictate the style of play that they want. And, and I just think a lot of that has to do with their physicality. So, you know, we got our hands full in that game. But, uh, you know, like I said, you go through any matchup in the conference tournament and I don't know if there's a favorite on any night. You know, if you if you were in Vegas, I don't know how you would do this uh, uh, for that. But, uh, you know, I, I just think when you look all the way top to bottom and I don't think anyone's going to be surprised on any win or any loss uh, in these first round games uh, just because it's that close. I thought our league was that good this year. Uh, you know, and we talked about it just a second ago. I, I do think anyone can beat anyone. But, uh, you know, the thing that about Southern Arc is is – you know, their experience in postseason play. And, and, you know, that's part of why we recruited the way we did. We went and got guys that have had some success in some postseason play. I'm hoping maybe our guys will understand the challenge uh, at hand, playing a really good team like Southern Arc. 
um, you know, and I'm hoping that experience from their past schools will help us now because, uh, you know, we don't have that experience right now, yeah, especially together with, with just having really Bubba Furlong that plays that's back for us. Uh, so, you know, having some guys that's gone through it uh, and gone through it at a high level, you know, I told you we've got some guys that's they've won a national championship, so they know how to win in the postseason. And, you know, what I told them after, uh, you know, we got beat at Southeastern was, you know, your experience is going to decide how much longer we play at this stage, you know, and, and I think it's, uh, the rest of our guys' duty to try to extend our senior seasons uh, as long as they can. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping they compete as, a, as a, at a high level for those three seniors because, you know, I'd like to coach those guys uh, for a little bit longer because this team <laughs> has been a lot yeah. of fun for me as a as a coach. So, uh, you know, our, our, our guys know how tough this game's going to be. Uh, you know, Southern Arc is a, is a tremendous, tremendous team. And, and you know, I, I'm just hoping we take it a possession at a time and it works out in our favor. Well, it, it is a, a very tight league. And I'll, I'll say this then for you. You'll be wearing the light jersey. How yep. about that? You'll be wearing the light colored jersey at least on the, the opening night of the tournament. So, Coach, thank you very much. As the Northwestern Rangers head into the second season now in postseason play, the GAC Conference Tournament is set to be uh, played Thursday through Sunday in Shawnee at Fire Lake Arena. And the Northwestern Rangers will be the number three seed. Coach Vinay Patel, what a great turnaround this year and success to you and, and may this season last as long as it possibly can. Thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the summit. Thanks Joey. And really, really appreciate what you do for small college basketball. I mean, it, it's awesome in small college athletics. So really appreciate what you do in this part of the country. Now that means a lot. Thanks coach. Thank you.